Hello, everybody. Now, I was going to originally be doing a movie review today, but things just worked out. I finished the book I was reading, so let's review it before I forget what happened in it. It's actually been a long time since I've read The Mammoth Hunters. It's the first book I read out of the Ch Earth Children series. And after reading the first two again, it's really weird reading these in order. Mainly because the continuity gets bad very quickly. You think they just have a note sheet on things that happened or some kind of reference? Because this book spends a lot of its time just retreading ground that they already did in Clan of the Cave Bear, except with humans instead of Neanderthals. Which is about as exciting as it sounds, honestly, at times. Ayla and John Delar, after leaving the valley, have found themselves at a Mamuti camp. Now, this particular tribe, I guess you'd refer to them as, or cave or whatever, were actually discussed in the previous book. They had a minor role then, they were just kind of like, oh, they exist. They also mentioned how they tend to be very outspoken and just kind of speak their mind on things. Or at least the one character does, specifically. Really push your hair already? I was really hoping she was going to be distracted for longer than this. Come on, get. Yeah. You're messing up the color balance on my screen. Come on. Monkey. Anyways. Pet. You're going to be a problem, aren't you? I knew it. Stay over here. Stay. Stay. We'll continue. Should really cut that out, but I'm not going to because it's just going to make a big jump cut. They end up at the Mamuti camp. And, well, the camp is interesting. It's set up into different hearths, each one being named after a specific animal, which represents that one group. The one they discover is run by the is Lion Camp, which has the Lion Hearth in charge, obviously. And then it's got like other smaller hearths around it. It's pretty much just like an earth lodge. Like they're all kind of amazed by the fact they made a cave that's not a cave. And I'm pretty sure that John Delar did kind of encounter these in the previous book, but it was never discussed in too much detail. They spent more time focusing on bolt making. It's exciting, I swear. Anyways, Ayla is really nervous about meeting this new group, but they do end up living with them because of, you know, winter happening. And she does want to meet others, as she puts it. This is where the book very quickly starts slipping from the previous one. John Delar, who was so in love with Ayla in the previous one, and they were going to travel together and go to his home, is all of a sudden embarrassed to be in love with Ayla because of her clan background, even though he seemed kind of okay with it. He stopped calling them flatheads and referred to them as animals, and was just being generally a better person about it in the previous book, towards the end. He just kind of accepted it. They've kind of forgotten this. All of a sudden, he's really embarrassed every time she brings it up. And it does get brought up quite a bit, because it happens the lion camp has a child of mixed spirits in it, named Right Egg. Nobody knows he can talk, and all of them do think of him as an animal, until Ayla shows him how to talk using hand signals, and he remembers. And it's actually pretty interesting. Also, had a really nice callback to Clan of the Cave Bear, Mamut, who's the oldest man in any of the camps. Gone, kinda. But Mamut was actually had his arm healed by a clan woman who they say is Isa's grandmother, but I'm pretty sure it was just her mother in Clan of the Cave Bear. I don't really remember. 
Like, it's kind of one of those things, and I just kind of casually mentioned it once or twice. But, yeah, they discuss, they discuss in more detail that Mamot was actually living with them and had a, actually, like, had a mate of his own and everything. And nobody else is apparently aware of this. Nobody even remembers what this guy's name is. He's that old. He just had a lot of kids over the years. Or at least many generations. I don't know how they track sons. Cause they're like, oh, it's a child of your spirits. But they kind of sleep around a bit. Eventually they're all going to start looking the same. I imagine. The main plot of the story ends up being that Ayla gets involved with Renek, who's an ivory carver. It's an interesting plot point because she starts because she just kind of because oh, John Delar, when he's teaching her to be like a regular human, does teach him. She kind of tries to explain cl the clan symbol, which pretty much assumes to assume the position. And he kind of makes a, like, he explains it, oh, well, if I kiss you, that's what I want. And it's like, okay, whatever. And as a result, after Ayla's had some drinks, because there's beer, because of course there's beer, which there actually was bad then, so there's that. But she ends up sleeping with this guy, and John Delar gets really pissy about it, and their relationship starts falling apart. Because he's just being a jealous little bitch. It's all he's doing. And Renek's more than happy with this, because he wants to be with Ayla. He actually blatantly tells her that he wants to, like, be married to her and have kids with her. And John Dollar never even mentions the concept of, like, becoming a pair with Ayla. So she's convinced that Ayla does, that uh, John Dollar doesn't love her anymore. I'll explain why this really annoys me later, but... The two of them start getting pushed farther and farther apart. Everyone sees what's happening, and it's just kind of very frustrating... Because all they have, like, literally, all they have to do to reconcile months of neglect in their relationship is to talk about it once and to have sex. And that's it. All their relationship really does consist of is a John Delar being like, oh, I love you. And then they have sex. And that's it. At least her neck actually seems to have some kind of interest in Ayla outside of that. Even if it does... Just kind of him being like, oh, she's beautiful, I want to do carvings of her. Renek's also notable for just kind of being a random black guy. They do explain that his mother, like his father, went on like some like absurdly long journey and pretty much just walked to Africa and tried to bring back the woman he fell in love with and their kid, but she died, but the kid lived. And it's just kind of a weird little detail in the story where it's like, huh. You have Ayla, this perfect blonde with blue eyes, being fought over by the perfect blonde-haired, blue-eyed man and the perfect black man. Starts feeling a bit like a self-insert fan fiction to me. It really does get weird, and it's just... Well, that's the majority of your actual plot. That's a problem. Especially because it just kind of comes out of nowhere, and there's very little payoff at times, other than John Delar being whiny, and Ayla not understanding what she did wrong, because he never bothered to tell her that you can't just go around sleeping with other people as you wish. He forgot a lot of things that way. There's legitimately a part of this where she's trying to figure out how to go to the bathroom with pants on. It's really weird. Among the other characters that are really notable, because there's so many in, the, in Lion Camp, it's Frebeck, Crozy, and Fraley. They're from the, hearth, the Crane Hearth, which is normally really high status, and there, there's a lot of friction between them. Fraley's pregnant and really sick, and Frebeck won't let Ayla treat her, despite her being a healer, because she was raised by the clan. And... Like, they just kind of bicker constantly. Crozy's really demanding. And then you find out later on, after all this annoying character stuff, well, there's so someone who really is kind of unforgivable for how bad he is at times. Like, he's just nasty. You find out that he's pretty much just was raised by rednecks and doesn't know any better. They make this thing about how it's a big deal that he actually, you know, stands up to people and tries to do things to get at what he wants. Which I'd say is impressive, but he's annoying. 
he's just not a likable character. Even when they do kind of, like, the big, like, pivotal, pivotal, uh, Mamuti summer meeting thing, which is pretty much the exact same thing as what the clan does, except without the bear ceremony, honestly. They just kind of... Just, he just changes face entirely and shows off to his, like, his, uh, actual, like, birth family that, oh, hey, look, I'm better than you now. It's, eh, it's nice seeing him have a bit of a redemption arc, but I really just don't give a damn. I would have been happier if they just kind of stayed these jerks that nobody liked. That would have been a more interesting thing, or at least have, like, a better explanation. It's like, oh, Fraley likes him because he actually wanted her for more than just her status. Fair. But you kind of massively devalued yourself and your children. And Crozy's not that bad. Like, she just kind of comes off as, like, manipulative, annoying old lady with some actual skills that no one wants to learn. They could have done more with this. I'm glad with what it is with the redemption arc. But it could have been handled better, and at least made Frebeck less of a just annoying character you kind of want to die halfway through the book. He's also racist, and I don't know why that's in there, but it is. None of the other characters are really that notable. You have the headman Talut, who's a giant, and Thule, which is the headwoman, and his sister. If they're not mated, don't worry about that. And she's also quite large, and that's about the extent of them. Their characters, they're big. They're kind. Of, he's kind of a big oaf. It's weird. Apparently, he has long, shapely feet, which is a detail I did not want to know. One of the other main things in this book is that Ayla is starting to become a god incarnate. Previously, she had invented horse ta training, snowmen, the Travois, concept of using flint and steel to make fire, all sorts of things. Well now, we can add domestic dogs in general, like she's the first one to ever do this apparently, the sewing needle. It's kind of more stuff with medication that she introduced to people that they didn't know know that much about. Sign language being introduced to people, because it was a clan thing. Like, it just kind of, she's getting a bit absurd here. She's inventing a lot of stuff. And, like, saddles, although that's kind of a technicality if somebody else mentions it. In contrast, John, John Delar does have some things. In the previous book, he invented the spear thrower, which I forgot to mention. And this time around, he invents the concept of like the like a halter and like bridle for horses. That's something, I guess. And he also invents being annoying. He's so annoying in this. And this is kind of why I feel in the previous book even it would have been better if the two of them did not end up in a relationship. It would have had a much more natural flow in this if he was bringing her to the Mamudi camp so she could meet other people that she might be related to, potentially, because no one knows who her parents are. And then he realizes over the course of the book, after an ex taken an interest in her, that he is in love with her. He's just never been in love before. And he doesn't know if she feels the same, and that's why he backs off. Instead of just being like, oh, another man looked at you, I'm instantly jealous. Oh, you slept with that man because your upbringing told you that you can't say no. Oh, well, I hate you now, and I'm going to sleep somewhere else and pick fights with you all the time. He becomes very unlikable, and it makes it very frustrating, because if all they have to do to reconcile this relationship is just be like, Oh, I'm sorry, I still love you, then it's not a big problem. In fact, I'm going to say it's just not that important story-wise. It wouldn't really have changed anything if they were, like, a couple and Renek was still getting involved. Because it obviously doesn't matter either to them. And one thing, so I just, apparently I don't have any books beyond this one. I must have gotten rid of them. I know I got rid of, like, the fifth and sixth ones, but, you know. 
the one thing that is worth noting that in all of this with him being such a drama queen about the fact that Alo is interested in another man in the sixth book part of the main plot is that John Dollar cheats on Alo with other women because she's busy being a priestess they've already had a kid in her joint at this point and he's sleeping around like crazy because he's not getting any at home I might be exaggerating that a bit. It's been a long time since I've read that. I just remember that's kind of the main story of that one. And them saying the prayer of the mother, which is like five paragraphs long, constantly. It's really horrible. I hate it. I guess a brief summary of the next few books. The fourth one was okay. It doesn't really do a ton. There's more scenes of awkwardly watching animals mate. It's just them journeying back and experiencing other tribes and the kind of stuff that annoyed me in the Valley of the Horse, Valley of Horses, where it's just like, oh, here's this tribe we met. We're going to go into a lot of detail about them and then never talk about them again. Yay. Although some of these are tribes we experienced previously, so there's that. The fifth one was so bad I didn't read more than the first two chapters. It was incredibly boring. Everyone has really long, complicated names, and I don't care. I do not care about the Zelandoni politics, thank you. I want to read about cave people. I wish the series would have actually talked about the clan more. This book does kind of. Because there's this thing with Ayla having a fixation on bringing Dirk to the Mamuti so she could actually, like, have him in her life. But realizing repeatedly that it's not a good idea and then fixating on it again later it's it's stupid she has like a 10 second memory apparently when she finally does make the decision she leaves mm. to my knowledge there's another book coming out in this series i don't know when but if i what it does happen if it is cheap enough i will pick it up and read it, and give you a new book review. But I don't want to reread the fifth or sixth books. Also, you know how I mentioned to remember the detail in the previous review that Ayla hunted an onager by herself in the Valley of Horses? According to the fourth book, she's never seen an onager before. That's how lazy this gets for continuity, when a major character development point is completely erased. This book does it too. They forgot that apparently, it's never mentioned and it really should be, that the clan could hunt mammoths and that they did successfully on multiple occasions, including once with Ayla on the party, or they went to like, he'll go help butcher the mammoth. In this one they say that only humans hunted mammoths, which fairly do say Neanderthals humans, same thing. But she never mentions this to anyone. But she constantly talks about everything else. So it's like she's completely forgotten. You think she would tell them about how the clans have their own summer gatherings. And how they're literally just doing the exact same stuff the clan does. But they never say this. The only time clan stuff's mentioned that's important is relating to Rydag. And even then, they gloss over a lot of stuff. It's not a terrible book. I would actually recommend, if you're going to read the series, if you're curious, either, like, you can definitely start with The Clan of the Cave Bear. You really should. If you cannot find that book, start with this one, because it's very similar. Just be warned that there's a lot of caveman sex. A lot of just weird stuff that doesn't really make sense in a lot of ways. Bad continuity in a whiny, whiny lead male character. Too, because Renek is also kind of whiny. Although Ayla isn't really great to him, so whatever. Anyways, next time, movie review. If you'd like to see more, like, if you like my content and would actually like to support me, I do have a Patreon. The link will be below. So, yeah. I'll leave it at that for now, and if there's a seventh book indeed coming out, there will be a review for it one day. And if I happen to find the next three secondhand, like, super cheap, maybe I'll do separate reviews of them. But for now, that's all you're getting about them. See you next time.